All right, Shabbat Shalom. Good morning once again to everyone. What an exciting time that we've had already this morning. And this excites me for what it is that we're about to, to dig into, what we're about to examine and study. Um, so Brother JP, if you will, uh, we're going we're gonna to mention the time here where Yahusha heals a boy with a demon in Matthew 17, verses 14 through 21. And then, of course, uh, we'll go to the Mark and the Luke uh, after you get done with that. And then let's discuss. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 17, starting in verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Master, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falls into the fire and oftentimes into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. Then Yahushua answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Yahushua rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Yahushua apart and said, why could not we cast him out? And Yahushua said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove, hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. All right, let's take a look at the, the Mark account of this in Mark 9, 14. And uh, let's take this one down to 29. All right, hallelujah. This is Mark chapter 9, starting in verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question you with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pinneth away. And I spoke to thy disciples, and they could not cast him out. And they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him straightway, the spirit tore him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Yahushua said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child, the child cried out and said with tears, Master, I believe. Help thy, help thou mine unbelief. And when Yahushua saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Yahushua took him up by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Where are we at, brother? Go ahead. Unmute your mic. Uh, I've been trying to unmute myself. This thing's yes, having difficulties here. Uh, the next one is Luke 9, 37. And take it oh, down to 42. Hallelujah. This is Luke chapter 9, starting in verse 37. And it came to pass that on the next day when they were come down from the hill, much people met him. And behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him, that he foameth again, and bruising him, hardly departed from him. And I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Yahushua answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. 
And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down and tore him. And Yahushua rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Hallelujah. All right. What is it that uh, you see in these three accounts? Because there's a little bit more in, uh, in the Mark version than there is in the Matthew. But uh, what is it right. you see? Yeah, that, that Mark version was beautiful. You know, I, I couldn't help but see the verse in 23, how he says, the, the man, he says, because um, Yahushua said, if, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And it's interesting, the father's response in verse 24, and straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Master, I believe, help thou my unbelief. You know, it's, it's an interesting response. Um, it was a building up of that faith for that, for him still, even though he's like, I believe he's like, you know, just, it, it's, I don't know. I, I, it just seems like an interesting response to say like how I believe, but help me with my unbelief. Again, I, I can only sympathize now being a father and having a son and a daughter and, and going through something so terrible as this to where your faith is there, but it's so hard when, you know, even when my kids get sick, it's hard. It's, it's a, and, and just thinking about this man whose son is getting tore and he's falling to the ground and wanting to go on fire and, and this demons in him. So I, I was just sympathizing with this man just when he said, I do believe, like I believe, but how my unbelief, because I'm struggling. That's what he sounded like he was saying to me, but praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Yeah, hallelujah. Um, you know, that, those are some things that I that I noticed as well, you know, in, in this particular verse. Um, when, when we see these these things spoken, you know, that was the first thing I thought about, too. This this man having to see this, you know, uh, his son dealing with this and and what it did to him. And there was a few words in there that, uh, you know, that I noticed in your translation versus what I was looking at. Um, and I'm going to take us back to the Matthew account here, um, where he is, you know, he's talking about here, he's like epileptic. And, and I see this as in a, in a lot of verses that it says this. But I wanted to take a look at this where, you know, here, uh, I think yours said it was a lunatic, which we see in the same in, in the King James Version. But in this, it's, it's showing that it's a, it's a, a middle or a passive voice from a presumed uh, derivative of the G4582, which means uh, to be moonstruck, uh, that is to be crazy or to be a lunatic. So he was basically out of his mind, you know, uh, he wasn't thinking clearly, you know, this thing had control of, of this child, you know, to, to the point where, you know, he's talking about this, that he's throwing them into the fire, or into the water. And, you know, there's a couple other verses that we've, that we've looked at um, in the past that, that, re, that reference the same type of uh, a, a control of a, of a person and how it controls that person and throws them down into the fire, into the water, how it became, you know, and the one uh, where the, the person was very strong, you know, that he was very, uh, very aggressive. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily say that in this because he's a child where, you know, that it affected him, but it, it definitely controlled everything about his, you know, the way he would be if, uh, if he wasn't underneath of this control. And it's interesting as we get down to where they're questioning, you know, like you said, the father, you know, if you would believe, well, he said, I did believe. So, but he understand immediately that it, uh, it had something to do with his unbelief as well which that really caught my attention because he believed, but yet there was still unbelief. And that comes into where we look at Yahushua's comments to, to him, as well as to his disciples, when they brought him to the side and said, well, why weren't we able to cast it out? You know, and, and here, this in the Matthew account, it says, he, it says, because of your unbelief, is what Yahushua told him here in, in verse 20. For truly, I say to you, if you have believed as a mustard seed, if you had belief as a mustard seed. Now, you know, this is something that's very small, uh, but very powerful. And it doesn't take a lot of it to happen. So if we look that in, into consideration to this man's belief, but there was also 
a lack of, you know, of belief. He's saying the same kind of things here to his disciples in this account anyways, you know, that they also didn't have a full belief, but then he goes into it even further to make the statement that, you know, that there, there are some of these things that, that can only go out by prayer and fasting. And, and that led me to a, 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 you know, a thought about why wouldn't we just continuously go to prayer and fasting when we see this kind of a situation? You know, this is a, a learning lesson here because we know that when there's the, 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 the prayers of the righteous are powerful and they're effective. And then the fasting side of it, when you're linking this together for a direct purpose or a direct reason that you're actually fasting, which is to combat this spiritual possession, this amplifies this this power the, the power it, 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 with the prayer and the fasting yoked together becomes something that's more than than any other evil spirit uh, a foul spirit can 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 stand against. Even though these disciples have been walking with Yahusha all this time and they've seen him do this countless times where he delivered people, you know he's healed people. You know you would think that their faith would be mighty and strong from the teachings and the lessons. But as we see here, you know, this is something that still is lacking in there. And if it only takes a seed of a, a, of a mustard seed, a small seed to do these things, how is it that their, their faith, as small as it might be, or was it strong enough, you know, to be able to move that? You know, so this is a lesson that I was taking from this as I was reading this, you know, in, in our day to day, a lot of people say, why is it that we don't see the power in that coming? And maybe it's because we're not getting in enough prayer and fasting in our lives about the situations that we're, that we're coming up against, whether it's, you know, the things that are happening against us in this life that we've experienced, discussed just prior to this, you know, how the enemy is attacking. You know, when we start to see these things what I'm starting to see here for myself today as I was reading this, that is reminding me, and we have to, again, be reminded, you know, continuously that sometimes we have to do things a little differently than what we, you know, we don't want to give it the full, you know, we think we can just throw a prayer at it, and that's always going to be good enough. But what we're seeing in this example is that we cannot always just depend on prayer when you're dealing with spiritual matters. You know, some of these things are strongholds on people's lives. You know, and so therefore, you need to add a whole nother level of authority and, and power into, into included with your prayer and your amuna. You know, they come together in one package and, and they're unified and they, and they, they're, that's a package of, uh, of uh, that's put together that's, that's stronger than the enemy can withstand. So this is a, a very strong key that we need to pay attention to in this. And I'm going to go to you, Silva family, um, in a minute. Um, I want us to really kind of hone in on this uh, a little bit more in this area. But I see there's some serious examples that we can take from this. If we look in the mark uh, here, he doesn't talk to them about when they ask him. You know, he doesn't tell them that it had anything to do with their unbelief in here. You know, he, he immediately goes to, you know, the, except by prayer and fasting. Which I, you know, I thought that that was an interesting account that we don't see that in in that version, and and when we look in the same one, you know, we we don't see where he's criticizing their the the disciples' lack of faith either. And these in this last account, so we only see that in the one account, um, but the the answer is still remains the same. You know, it's uh, it's the, the rebuking of the spirit is another thing that it was, it was very strong in what I was looking at. Um, because a lot of times, you know, when we come in the church environment, we, you know, they have their doctrines about, you know, uh, th that word, you know, that, that, that they use. Uh, let me go back to here again, because it just lost me the rebuke. Um, you know, the, the, what does that really mean to rebuke? What is it that he's doing there that we should take an account of? You know, and when we look at this account and we see um, the rebuke, the G2008, and I thought that this was very interesting when we see that it, um, that is to tax upon, that is to censor, it is to admonish, 
and by implication to forbid to charge and also rebuke. There's some powerful words there that he's speaking to these unclean spirits, you know. Um, and they had to hear this from the master, you know, his mouth. His, when, they, when, he, when he spoke, he was able to set them free. But he's telling us here, and we don't even see uh, necessarily the, the, the breakdown that we see in the others, even about the fasting and praying in these uh, in this account. So I just uh, wanted to bring these points forward for us to really think about why is it that we're seeing things, you know, in these accounts that are telling us how we should battle our spiritual battles. You know, uh, it's pretty clear. I think if we use this as our example in whatever battles that we're facing in life, instead of just simply continuing to pray, why don't we just start changing this a bit and go and add some fasting which is a, a, a directed dedicated purpose that you're actually giving up you know that you're fasting from food you're denying yourself because you are focused on this matter and you're a, and you know now from what Yahushua said that if we if we do this our the power factor goes up how many does it go up we don't know it could be up a hundred fold because it's kicking it out it can be 60 fold it doesn't matter at that point because now our amuna is mixed in with it you know what i'm saying our faith becomes elevated and it's strengthened in this because now we're going to see something move because according to yahushua it has to these are the things that we have to do hallelujah brother rod i want to get your thoughts and then i'm gonna come to you brother dean and uh, sister carmen and then the silver family Shalom, brother. Shabbat shalom. <clears throat> uh, well, there's a lot of things um, here. I'm gonna be brief. I'll stick to the rules too. Um, you know, I think that you know, I, I, I like the Mark passage out of the three uh, because it, you know it's very descriptive. You know, Mark, you know, is able to pull us into the picture. You know, first of just you know, Yahushua arriving on the scene, you know, seeing a dispute, you know, seeing that there were things being talked about in reference to what was going on, you know, the Pharisees, you know, probably, you know, with 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 the, the grammar that's used, were saying things to the disciples because they couldn't cast them out. And then the, the father comes and he tells them, you know, what's going on? It's like Yahushua walks up, he's saying, well, what's going on here? Why are you talking to my disciples in this manner? Um, and the other thing is, you know, when he speaks to to the father, um, he's he's basing what he's saying to him on the words that the father used, um, because in his in his statement, his first statement, he says, "But if you are able to do anything, this is from the Greek text, help us." You know, I like what JP said is, is that, that he took, you know, the ailment of a son, he took it with himself, just like we, you know, when someone of our family is going through something, we feel it too. He took it with them. Help us have have compassion on us. And Yahushua says to him, and this is the, the Greek translation, he says, and Yahushua said to him, as for those words of yours, if you can, because there was there was a, 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 a focus on if you can do this versus I know that you can do this. So that's what he's pointing to. And that's why the father cries out. I am believing, but help me where I need faith. Help strengthen my faith is what he's asking. Um, so I wanted to point that out as well. So I'll leave it there um, for now. Hallelujah. Yeah, I, I, that was another area that I was looking at. Uh, his, you know, in, in that verbiage, you can see that there, there is a, a limited amount of belief, if you will. You know, when he's just asking him to come, if you can, you know, he's definitely not assured. He's heard, you know, of Yahushua's ability, you know, or, or else he probably wouldn't have brought him to him in the manner that he did. But I, I think that it's interesting how like you said, they're in the, in the midst of a conversation and Yahushua's like, you know, what's going on here? You know, what are you guys disputing about? What's the issue? 
you know, and then he goes in and, and talks about, you know, his, his son being possessed and how the disciples couldn't, couldn't, couldn't deliver him, you know, uh, that had to have been a, a position, if you think about it, for the disciples, you know, they're, they're walking with Yahushua, you know, um, and, and, and they, you know, people are probably looking at them, you should be able to do the same things as, as, as the, your master can do, yeah, you know, um, you've been walking with, you've seen how he does it, you know, who, you can only imagine the thoughts in their minds as they're going through this discussion. You know, we don't we don't get very very big bit of what it is they're talking about, but we get the sense of what they're focused on, what the discussion discussion's about. So as we put ourselves in that same position, we see Yahushua walking up, and he, and he brings this clarity, uh, and now he brings a little more insight to us of why it is that they fail. Why is he why is he allowing this to be written and for us to understand? Because guess what, we come up a lot against some things that didn't didn't have success either yeah uh instead of getting discouraged why don't we follow the four the full formula that he's outlining for us here and allow that to work for us i believe that we're going to see a lot more when we really get serious if you will about a matter at hand and then and instead of just throwing a prayer and we don't even know the kind of prayers that were being thrown out you know some people can throw out some just like canned prayer if you will you know, in some of the, you, I know y'all been in some of these churches, buildings as well, and, and synagogues where, you know, their prayers are like generalized, if you will. You know, they're just throwing it out there to cover it. Hey, I threw a prayer out there, but do they really truly believe? Are they really, con like Brother Rod said, you know, when you, when, you're, when you hear somebody that's engaged in something like this, what is your first thought? How are you going to act towards this? If you get called in on this matter, somebody asks you, well, you walk this way, set them free. We, you know, please, you know, they're, they're at their wit's end. They don't know what to do, with, you know, with somebody that's in that kind of position where their child is possessed by something. It's not normal. You know how it is for, for you with your children, brother Dean, sister Carmen, what's your thoughts on this? See, see your head over there. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Um, I'm going to basically be very short. If at some point later it becomes a further discussion, then I'm happy to share. Uh, Carmen is happy to share. Um, my son went through this. Our son went through this. Um, so when I'm reading this, I'm literally, it's like, a, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, this Mine is not a, uh, what's the word? Uh, hypothetical. I, I actually went through, through, through this. Um, and I think this is part of why uh, Yahuwah has driven me to know his word, um, because um, this thing that, let me get to the scripture first, and then we, we can talk about anything else later on. I don't want to take up time, but I've been through this. Yep. The fact that when Yahusha says, uh, how long has he been like this? Yep. Um, this thing, it stands out to me so loud. One, because we're given uh, these children to steward. We are stewards. Yeah. Um, so the question is, when we say we have faith, um, is our faith, are we stewarding our faith? Because we steward the child to grow. Yeah. Are we stewarding our faith to grow? Because um if we're stewarding our faith to grow then how long would it have taken us when yahushua says you know what are you disputing you know what are you disputing how how long has it taken you to work out that your method is off yeah um and that's a problem because to me this is a little bit like the watchman you're the watchman how long has it taken you to realize that the enemy has breached mm. yep yeah? um and you know i'll just say my son was very big you know he was fervent diligent on speaking in tongues and i remember getting to that point where this is used to be the thing in christianity you know you speak in tongues you know you're anointed you're filled you know holy ghost and i remember that moment after wanting to have this you know this gift all my life in 18 years i remember saying he needs to stop babbling he needs to stop speaking where he does not know and this literally became part of the thing that i believe that yahuwah used to 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 to, to, to you know to, to redeem my son because he stopped this first 
for wanting to have these gifts, the gifts that validated, you know? So, yeah, yeah, we can speak another time, but yeah, how long, how long, how long has this situation, how, situations in, in our midst, in our assembly, how long has it been like this? And what have we done any differently? Hallelujah. You know, it's interesting as you were speaking and as I was reading this, uh, preparing for this, this study, that thought came to my mind because I've been in the church. I've seen, you know, when I read this account of how this evil spirit controlled this child, as well as others the same way, how they falling down and they're convulsing, the same kind of things that we see in the churches. Um, that they're thinking is the, the move of the Holy Spirit, right? Or, uh, uh, um, but we also see that example in the con in, within uh, Hinduism with the Kundalini spirit. You know, these are unclean spirits in my belief that it is making them do these things that we're seeing described in these scriptures. You know, there's no coincidence that we don't ever see an example of a believer doing those things, only those that are possessed or controlled by these spirits, right? Um, and I believe what you're saying also can come into that because as we studied the, the tongues, you know, as they're speaking, it's not gibberish. It's not some crazy thing. It's where they were all able to hear each other and understand each other. You know, they were communicating in their language, but they had the ability to understand what's going on. It, and, you know, it didn't make sense to those that are hearing it out there. How can you understand this? You know, this is a, a, a different tongue. Well, when we start to look at the scriptures of what they really say, and now we, now we compare them against what we know, what we've seen ourselves, that line come to me. And that, and that was really one of, the, one of the times that I really put the two to two together, what I'm seeing in the scriptures compared to what I'm seeing in the churches. And it's, it's scary to me to think that these people are in there turning themselves over willingly to this because they want what you said, that outward example, the outward manifestation that justifies that, hey, I'm filled with the spirit. Well, yeah, well, which one, you know? Uh, are you doing the things that the spirit really is supposed to do or what happens to those that are possessed by an unclean spirit? You know, so, you know, I, I don't know, but that's what it spoke to me. That's what I was seeing as I read it earlier and as I heard you speak the same thing. So uh, interesting perspective on that. Hallelujah. Silva family. Shabbat Shalom. Are you there? There you go. Yeah, I'm here. I just wanted to say thank you guys for uh, iterating the point about uh, the spiritual clean cleanliness that is associated with fasting. Um, not that it is a be all um, solution, because obviously it's not. Um, and some people take things and make doctrines out of just anything in scripture, but it's definitely something that is essential that needs to be done that I see a lot of times believers neglect for whatever reason, you know, they make excuses. A lot of them like to turn to Isaiah and say, what is the fast that Yahuwah is called us to? And I, it makes me laugh because I'm like, yeah, I get it. You know, he's actually called us to both. Um, he does want us to fast and do it appropriately, spiritually, and even naturally, because naturally fasting cleanses our body of toxins. Um, if you do the research, it forces cells in your body to begin to process and stimulate um, in a different way that brings forth renewal, healing. Um, if you see a lot of people that talk about how they went on different types of fasts, um, even a Daniel fast, that helps me understand Daniel a lot about how he ate and he refused you know, a lot of different foods. He ate very clean, which is what we have to fight to do now. Um, I, I actually this morning know I received a revelation from Father, like that's a big part of Satan's warfare is the food. <laughs> Nowadays, because if you look at it, our food is so polluted and so contaminated, unless you happen to live in a place where you you get to grow a lot of your own, you know, you're going in the stores and you're kind of pretty much forced to put toxins in your body. And toxins are naturally made by plants and in, 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 in different things, but it's even greater when you add um, different processes to the food. So definitely you want to be a clean vessel, right? that father can work through so that's where i really saw where the fasting sometimes is necessary because it's pretty much cleansing even the natural temple out um to bring you into a state of of even greater purity before father um that being said i do want to speak briefly about the gifting of tongues because i happen to have it um 
And it was really funny because I was able to go to another country where I don't know the language and, and preach the gospel. Um, that to me was, it was eye opening to the fact that how you utilize it is not how people have been taught to utilize it. And it also brought me to a stage of great humbleness because I really had very little control over what I said. And it was people that I wanted to, and when I said control of what I said, it's like, it's really spirit led. I'm not the one doing it, you know? <laughs> and he's, he put me before a group of people that I necessarily would not have even talked to. And it was actually on the street, um, as opposed to when I went into the actual building. This is when I went to China, by the way. Um, and I knew very little Mandarin. Um, I was in the actual, where they let me visit, which you would call a church and not a peep, you know, because I really want, I'm, I'm a tester. Like I want to see the scripture work. I want to see it work. And so I'm praying to father, like, well, if there's something you want me to say to these people, if there's something you want me to say, not a peep, I get on the street corner and people come over. Cause I'm, I hate to say it like this, but I'm, I'm a spectacle in China. Many of them never seen a person of color. <laughs> so they come over and they just want to like touch my hair, take pictures with me. And I begin to utter. And they looked at me like, wow, you know, you know, Mandarin. And I'm like, I, I don't even know <laughs> to the fullness everything that I said, but it was like, no. And I was just talking to them about the most high. And so, you know, they walked away kind of glary eyed, <laughs> like, wow, this girl just got finished talking to us about the most high. But I was like, Father, I don't understand. Um, and it wasn't until many years later that he gave me an a, a understanding of that. But I definitely know these gifts work. They're real. I've had so many encounters with the supernatural um, just because that's what I I needed to hold me in place because oh, yeah. I was one of those people that was like, yeah, that ain't true. I never believed in people falling out and convulsing on the ground. I'm like, that's, that junk is crazy. So all of it is crazy. But Father <laughs> brought me right. to an understanding that all of it is not crazy. And if you obey me and you humble yourself, I'll show you things. I'll do things. Yeah, you will. Definitely yeah. will. And so I just wanted to put it out there because I don't want people to walk away with the understanding that it's not real, but it's definitely not the way that it's been uh, portrayed in uh, many of the. Right on. Many, I agree with many, you. Yeah, many of the circumstances. Um, so that's something further to ex in. in investigate because over here you see the off balance and it's sometimes when people get too much into just lettering and then they leave off all the miraculous stuff that can happen because father wants it to happen it ain't got nothing to do with me it's, it's it's what he wants and so it's good to be balanced yeah if it's the spirit if it's the spirit read by the ruach you know you're going to experience the manifestation of that gift uh, there's a scripture you know, as we're talking about this, uh, Daniel, you, you mentioned Daniel, and Daniel 9, 3, it says, and I set my face unto Yahuwah Elohim to seek him by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. You know, it's telling us, the, this, this is another example that we see, you know, of these together. And, and you know, there's, there's definitely a, a, something that sets us that apart when you put, start to put those two together, you know. It, we see the example of it. So I think that it's important that we look at these examples as we're moving forward in this walk. You know, you're going to be, as, you know, sister said, you know, that desire to walk in this is going to continue to amplify. And you're going to start to, to exude these gifts that are not of you. You don't control them by repeating the same word a hundred times and all of a sudden you start speaking a, a different language. It's uh, but it's gibberish to everybody else. They have no idea what you're saying, you know, um, versus a spirit that actually comes on you and you're communicating something that somebody else understands, you know, which is the purpose of speaking. Then if you look at this, what it talks about when you're, when you're speaking in prayer, you know, in the tongue it, it, it is that it, you're not supposed to do it just out in anywhere, you know, and if you do, there, there needs to be a gift of interpretations in there. So, you know, there's order to these things as well. So, you know, not that that's really the focus necessarily here, but th these are things that we're, we're seeing, you know, I guess as examples, you know, in the scripture that we can actually see happening around us. And we need to make sense of those things so we don't get tied up into the same things that are being done in 
other churches or other synagogues that are walking outside of the Torah, walking outside the confines of the of the scriptures, you know, and adding things to it. That's where these things can be very dangerous. Uh, Alexandria, Shabbat Shalom. Hey there, sister. Shabbat Shalom. Please excuse me. It's always trying to find the button. He's <laughs> looking for the button. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And um, uh, Brother Rick, I just wanted to say this is such a wonderful study. Um, I, what I find in each scripture and passage, I always get lost on a word. Not lost, but the Father kind of makes you, uh, he uses a word for a certain reason. And going back to what Brother Dean said, um, stewarding, stewarding belief. Um, yes, I looked up the, the, the meaning of unbelief. And the meaning um, is stated, it is a lack of religious faith. I don't like that term religious, but it's a lack of faith. And in other places I saw that it means people don't want to believe the message of truth. And so I went to Strong's to look at the word unbelief. And according to Strong's, the Hebrew word is called a mesh. And when you look at the meaning of a mesh, it says time passed yesterday or last night, former time or yesterday. And I found that so very interesting. So I made me realize that he was saying, help me with my unbelief from what I know, what I have been taught or what I have not been taught, how to believe, how to have that faith. And this is what, what we really should see out of this one scripture in the word that Yahusha returned to him. You have an unbelief and he says, help me with my unbelief. He is saying to him, help me with my unbelief to show that he has faith that he can be helped with his unbelief. And so, yes, it goes back to the Torah, knowing the truth, stewarding that belief, knowing what the scriptures say, so you can move forward with the understanding of what prayer and fasting can do in these situations. But that is the power of the scripture, the stewarding of belief comes in that. So I just had to, just wanted to share that with everyone. And thank you and Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah. Isn't it beautiful when light bulbs happen and those aha moments happen, you, you know, you start to see something with more clarity, more understanding, you know, it takes your belief or your amuna to another level. You know, it, it allows you to see things that you, like he said, you know, I believed in a certain way to a certain degree because, you know, you know, he heard about what Yahushua could do. But if possible, come on over here and, and, and have compassion. Well, there was a measure of it because of what he heard, but he didn't totally believe it because he hadn't walked with it. He ain't understanding the scriptures and the details that, that, we're, that we're able to walk and look at them today. You know, we start to see, you know, what he's really saying. And then you, you gave a good explanation with that. You know, he had a level of belief, but Help me with the stuff that I don't really believe. Help my unbelief catch up to a level where I'm supposed to be for this to happen. You know, isn't that something that we all should be asking? You know, if there's a lack of our uh, belief in something, the ability, you know, in the one port, he did talk about his disciples, their lack of their faith, when you know they had to have a, a measure of faith. So as I said earlier, it's a, you know, there's something to it that's, that's missing in that link. And I believe when we get into a fasting effect, which we understand what a fast really is, you know, as you're focusing on something, it's not just giving up your food just because you want to give it up, you know, and want to, you know, we've been warned about, you know, don't do it as these others do where they go out there and just, you know, disfigure their faces and all these things that, you know, so people know that they're fasting. That's not, that's not really what it's about. You know, a real true fast is for you to have a situation that you're like, you're using a, a bow and arrow and you're pointing that arrow at that bullseye. You're, that's what this faith uh, fasting is about. You're focusing in on something that you're trying to attack, that you're trying to hit, you're trying to destroy, right? 
you're trying to remove from your life, you're believing with all these all these scriptures are like the arrows in your in your quiver, you know, and you're shooting them at this problem, you know, and and so we when we combine that with the with our prayer, which is a focused supplication to Yahuwah through you who about this situation and then we start to add a, a a whole nother segment called fasting to it which is a a whole nother piece of ammunition that goes together you know they fit together as perfect weaponry to destroy the strongholds you know to break the yokes to destroy the yokes you know these two are a combination and I, and I get the image in my head of the movies you know of like commando where the guy's got these two machine guns going at it you know destroying everything in front of them you know if we look at that this is where these two come together in perfect harmony i think we start to put this into uh, in executing these two principles together in the ways and the forms that the scripture outlines them to be used you put them together you're going to have an effect in your life so i think that's what yahushua is telling us this is a secret you know you know some things yeah, prayer, prayer, you throw prayer at it and believe, you know, but there's another level that a lot of people are leaving out of this, especially when it's something that's a serious battle, a warfare that you're that you're having to overcome. You're getting tired and weary of this fight. Okay, well, you're not having victory over it. You're not able to cast it out. Add some add some fasting with your with your prayers and now take it to another level, really destroy the works of the enemy. And what I want to get to here too is what Yahusha said. You know, after he cast the, this this unclean spirit out, we see that he that he's told him to to go out and to never never return back, which takes me to the scriptures about you know when he, you're cleaned out, and if you don't continue, but he gave it a directive to never come back. You know, he set this boy free, and he told these evil spirits to go and never come back. What if they do come back? Are they going to find that place empty? You know, did they lose what it is that he was given to them? Did a lot that protected that stopped this from happening? Which I believe it has to be the Ruach to do such a thing, where he, he's like that door that these evil spirits can't penetrate. So, but if we see the seven foul will come, if, if that place is still empty. So I just, that was another point that when I looked at this and I read that part, what he told these, these that that prayer come to my mind, or that, that uh, scripture came to my mind, you know. So it behooves us that when we do these things, we can't just leave that place unfilled, if you will, uh, because, you know, scriptures also warn us about what will happen if that does. It's going to be seven times worse. So I can only imagine if this young boy was to have that happen, that'd be a tragedy. You know, he already was already released from this experience once. He doesn't want to have it worse than, and that would sound pretty bad for, the, you know, throwing him in the fire and the water as it was. So it can destroy that. So I just wanted to kind of refocus us back on that because that seems to be a central point of what this message really entails for us is he's given us a secret weapon. Hallelujah. Brother JP, stretch them on. Yeah, hallelujah. Um... You when I when I read that, um, I'm looking in that that perspective as well of, you know, I, I tell them like we got to be prayed up and fasted up, and, and it's a combination of the two, um, and and I and I do personally, you know, don't I don't fast like many days, but you know the times I, I think about it now, it, it's you know the uh, a fast without water and food and prayer. Um, I believe can really take you a, into a focus and, and understanding that you're, you're really, you know, food has been a distraction for my life when it comes to a lot of things. I'm just, I'd rather eat sometimes, but, you know, and, and I think about it and I say, wow, like, you know, if we just stay prayed up and fasted up, doesn't mean you have to do it. You know, I, I've done it like weekly and sure, you know, that's cool, but, but just doing it and being in that ready position um, if you're going to go out there to battle, if you're, if you're not ready, then be careful. You know, it's like, be careful. Don't, don't just be thinking to be some, like, I'm going to come up and I'm going to do this to every person. And I'm going to start to take out a demon off of everybody. Like you got to be really ready and prayed up and fasted up. And that's what I felt like Yahushua was telling the disciples, like, be ready. Like you guys, and, and it's, and it was a learning thing. And, and so one of the portions um, I would just encourage you to go and read is uh, Acts chapter eight, uh, 19, 
um, starting in verse 11 and forward. And, and we see that there was, there was a situation where they thought they could do it. And, and these, and they weren't ready. And that spirit didn't just leave, it jumped on them. And it was kind of interesting. Uh, so I, I would just encourage you because it's a good little portion. So, but, you know, stay prayed up and fast it up. It's an encouraging for myself. I, I'm, I'm encouraged by this because, you know, like I said, I, I'm not, a, I, I, I probably fasted three days, <laughs> you know, I got to probably do more. So hallelujah. Uh, much alone, much alone, shabbat shalom. Hey, you know, there's times when you got to determine to go into a fast on your own. And there's also times when Yahuwah will direct you and call you to a fast for a particular purpose or reason. So, you know, nobody wants to fast. Nobody, do, you know, unless you're, you know, people use it. Hey, I'm fasting. So they want to, you know, use that as, well, I'm cleaning out my system. I'm going to lose some weight. That's not what this is for. You know, those may be byproducts of what happens and, and necessarily it doesn't even tell us how long you need to fast. You just need to fast. You need to be committed and, and dedicated to what it is you're trying to achieve. You know, it, it brings us into a singular focus is what I'm, what I'm seeing or what that does. And it amplifies, you know, it, uh, maybe that's what allows the Ruach to flow even better because now we're completely surrendering ourselves for a cause, a purpose. And we're trusting and, and keeping our focus on him, you know, through all this whole uh, process. So praise Yahuwah. Um, Sister Brittany, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Um, so I, uh, I wanted to share my thoughts on the scripture as well, um, where Yahushua said that, you know, this type uh, cannot come out except through prayer and fasting. Um, the thing that came to my mind was just the fact that um, there's different levels of uh, demons that we encounter. And so when he was saying like this type, you know, will not come out, I think he was highlighting that it was a certain spirit that was uh, pretty much, I guess, of a higher level of authority um, in the spiritual realm. And so um, just being aware that depending on what you're dealing with, you may, you know, need to consider going on a fast. And then um, even in addition to that, um, the scripture that came to my mind was, uh, where is it? In Matthew 18, 19 to 20, um, where Yahushua says, um, again, I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father who is in heaven. Um, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And so, um, of course, like, you know, there's times where we're called to fast, uh, you know, individually, but even like um, also like coming together for corporate fasting is important as well, um, because when we're pairing that fasting, um, which will allow us to operate at a higher level of authority. Um, and then when we come together and then pair that agreement amongst one another, then it's really um, just giving us an opportunity to allow Yahuwah to move on our behalf in ways that, you know, we wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't otherwise be able to. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, Cause over like over the past, uh, I think it was about maybe six months ago or maybe a little longer than that. Yeah, I put on my heart to start um, incorporating a fast every month. Um, and so that's been uh, just uh, something that he's kind of been putting on my heart to do. So uh, I think it would be great if we could do that as an assembly as well, um, because I know a lot of us have, you know, different things we're believing you yeah for. So just wanted to share. Thank you, sister. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you. Um, that's something that definitely is going to be more powerful. Uh, we know what the scripture says when two or more gather, of course, uh, one puts a thousand flight, two, ten thousand. So we see the application, the multiplication of, of that power and authority that goes forth. Um, you know, we, we what goes along with the prayer and the fasting is our amuna, our faith. These are the, the three that are required. We have to have all three of these together. You know, our, our, is our faith, even if it has a small part, 
but that small part goes together with the you know with the prayer as well as the fasting now you got you got a mixture that's very very potent hallelujah so you know that was one of the things that he said you know about the the lack of the faith of the of the of this generation as he said these wicked people you know they're they're perverse you know so they're not really you know they're, they're not walking and they don't understand you know what it takes to do these things because their mind's not on the scriptures not walking by the ruach so he's talking to them in that regard and now he brings in also with at one point with the, the disciples you know it was because of a lack of your faith too well you think you know if it only takes a, a, a small amount of faith why didn't it work well because these other factors weren't involved whatever this kind was that he was talking about is separate from any other kind you know some some kinds i guess come out where it doesn't require all of these things maybe the belief and the prayer is enough i say now from this from this example you know if you're coming up against something powerful you don't know what kind it is be, be prepared you know incorporate these things together brother charles shabbat shalom about shalom brothers and sisters um yeah i um i kind of got a question um i wanted to bring up something about naomi and i believe it was naomi and ruth but um i don't think it tie in but i don't think it ties in with this because when when yahushua told them he said the the bridegroom why should they mourn, you know, on that part when it was talking about fasting and mourning? Um, like we was talking about when you fast, you're like being emptied out of all the all the pollution or whatever was going through the days or the weeks and, and all those things. So so it but and you you will be filled up when you fast. You will be filled up with the word and, and whatever the focusing on what the father has to give you. But in this case, they were told not to fast. And I'm, I'm trying to see whether they're not fasting because when you fast, is it because it was, you know, you at your weak, one of your weakest points? Or is it because, you know, during that time you, you, you won't be able to sustain what, what's going on or something? That's kind of what I want to ask. Like, why, why was the reason why? And, um, I'll just sit back on this. Example. What account are you talking about where they're commanded or told not to fast? I, I guess I'm not following that particular, unless uh, one of the other brothers uh, has a better understanding of what it was your question was. Uh, I'm not quite understanding that part. Um, says, and you fasting doesn't make us weaker in my, in my, my, uh, my perspective. Fasting makes us stronger, you know. Um, it, it removes the, the distractions if it's done right. You're, you're going to be more focused. You're going to be more powerful during those times. That's why people fasted, you know. So I'm not really sure um, that question. Uh, can, well, well, what I mean, what I mean, sometimes when you fast, if you if you do a certain type of fast for so long, you know, without without having something. water or yeah, yeah. or something to drink, you will kind of um, like get weak. And you know that's why I say go on the go on the um go on the corner or go somewhere and wipe your face because you know because you probably be getting weak from um from fasting and and what the verse I was thinking about was verse fifteen Matthew's um what is this Matthew's nine fifteen verse fifteen why he told him when he said the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them but the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. And then they were fast. So that's what I was trying to ask. Like, why did he say that? Praise God. Well, that's a, that's definitely a different different type of topic about the scenario that he used that frame of mind because he was there with them, and he's telling them why why should uh, why should they fast while I'm still here with them? You know, um, once once I'm gone, then yeah, I I, I understand now what your your question is. Um, but I don't, I don't think that that's in the kind of sense because the master was there with them. They didn't need to do these things particularly, but once we do, we, this is a requirement that we're going to have to walk in. We're going to have to put these things into principle. You know, these are things that we must do. Uh, and of course he's no longer, 
with them. So now these principles are going to have to come into play, you know, and he's given us a recipe here, you know, of what we should do. So when we do experience these kind of situations, you know, and back to your fast, you know, it, a fast doesn't have to be for a long period of time, you know, unless you're called to that, you know, uh, that type of, of, of length, you know, I know fasting can be a short, short period of one day or part of a day. You know, we see examples of different kinds of fasts for different purposes. You know, um, I guess if you're trying to break something and it's not maybe breaking and so you continue in that uh, because you're focused and you're determined to break that, that would be a purpose. I think that would be more of why, you know, you would continue on for a longer period of time. But, you know, we could do a, a, a fast but if it's, if it's focused and it's got a purpose, now it's gonna be effective, you know, versus just saying, I'm gonna go on a fast just because I wanna go on a fast, because I wanna lose some weight, because I wanna, you know, cleanse my body. That's not the right purpose to fast. Fast is used as a purpose to fight. It's a, it's a weapon in that sense. So, Brother Jadiel, watch the moment, brother. Shabbat Shalom. <clears throat> um, I'm I'm looking more at fasting because the the problem that they had was was their lack of belief. And I think that you you mentioned it already, which is the most important weapon. Is without faith, it's impossible to please Yah. And that that fasting was and that prayer was supposed to equip the the individuals casting out um, rather than to equip the ones that they were casting it out from the fasting and the prayer is for the is for the believer not the one that doesn't believe you know to strengthen to strengthen you in your faith um as you move forward towards executing what yah wants you to do when he came to them he said the first thing he said to them was you know oh you have little faith like he, he pointed out the problem right away. Then he meant to then he mentioned the prayer of fasting because they already lacked their faith and they needed to get their own strength, their own mental clarity, their own mental stability in order in order to execute the things of Yah. You know, so is it's not that hey, I'm gonna fast and pray. Um, in scripture, I don't see anything saying, hey, I'm going to fast and pray for you is more. I'm going to fast and pray so that Yah hears me, so that I am approaching Yah in belief rather than in my own unbelief or my own dece deception. You know, when um, David was praying, fasting, praying for the child that was going to be taken, he wasn't praying and fasting saying hey, my prayer of fasting is supposed to help the child live. It was more like my prayer of fasting is supposed to allow me to engage with Yah and then make my request for the child known. So likewise, the disciples are supposed to pray and fast in order for them to be in a certain state with Yah so that way they can cast out the demon. You know, um, in Isaiah, Isaiah 58, he talks about, I'm going to be real quick, Isaiah 58, he talks about fasting and he says in verse 6, he says, uh, is not this the fast that I've chosen? And then he says, to loose the bands of wickedness that like execute it, to execute that act, to undo the heavy burdens, to execute those acts. And then it says, and to let the oppressed go free, to execute those things. So the fast that we're supposed to partake in supposed to enable us to execute the things of Yah. It's not that, hey, I'm going to fast and pray and then like some type of, you know, some type of thing is going to come to you because of my fast and prayers that I'm going to fast and pray for you so I can come and execute that relief for you. So I could come and execute that, removing that burden for you or loosen that band for you or, or with you or help you to do it, you know, so that's the that's how fasting and prayer needs to be um perceived rather than it being like a like a um i don't know what to what to call it but it's something for you so that way you can go and execute the power of yah rather than it's something that is gonna like power is gonna come out of your mind and go all the way over there and then remove the demon 
No, it's something for you to empower, to be empowered so you can go and execute that power that God's given to you. So that's what I, um, I want to bring out. Hallelujah. Exactly on point. I believe that as well. You know, it, it's something that is one of our weapons. It's something that allows us, you know, to be focused. Uh, it really is a, it's a, it's a yoke destroying, burden removing type of a, a, a thing. If it's used together with all these principles, you know, faith, prayer, fasting, you know, and I agree, you know, it, it, it brings us, you know, I think a lot of that fasting it is uh, to remote, to bring us into a focus, you know, because if we're, if we're surrendering that food for a reason, it, 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 it there, that reason needs to take focus. It needs to get into place. You know, what is it? So that I, that I'm equipped so that I'm ready and prepared, you know, to be able to go up against this, to be able to help set that person free. Uh, so I, I think we're, we're all seeing exactly that same thing. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, Brother Rod, you put your hand down. Uh, I guess maybe your answer got or your comment got answered or spoken or you want something to add something you know i thought i thought that um i thought that jadiel covered it pretty well um the only thing um because because i was going to focus on you know the actual things that yahuwah tells us to fast for and he pulled that out in isaiah that's why in acts when the seven sons of Sceva went out to do it, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't execute what they were supposed to execute. The demon says to them, Paul, I know, Yahushua, I know, but who are you? It's, it's to the believer to, to tap into what Yah's mission is for them. Um, and I think the disciples at that point may have been on autopilot. They may have been allowing their own mind and their own works um, get a little bit stale, <laughs> you know, and Yahuwah is always calling us to keep fresh, you know, don't leave the bag open and let the air get in and get stale, you know, we have to be fresh with him, you know, on a regular basis, in contact with him, in prayer with him, in reading his word, you know, dialoguing with his brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters, because it keeps us fresh. It keeps us sharp. We've been talking about the sharpening of the sword on a regular basis. When we stop doing that, our senses get dull. Our sensitivities get dull. Our sensibilities get dull. And we move in autopilot. And the plane is going to crash. You know, Yahuwah has to drive our plane. So, um, but yeah, I thought it was covered pretty good. Um, so that's all I was going to say. You said something that made me think about you know, when they're in the midst of this, you know, they're, they're seeing how Yahushua's done this, uh, you know, they, they've seen him do it multiple times now, you know, did they just think that they could just haphazardly go on because, you know, I, I, I believe, you know, I'm walking with him, I've seen him do it, I can do it too, and now they get out there and they just, they're not quit completely, like you said, they're maybe not focused, uh, they just think that they can just walk out the steps or, you know, go through the motions, if you will, as we say it today, and that's not going to get it done. You know, this has to be a pinpointed, focused uh, thing that you're doing, you know, and I think he's bringing this into their attention. You know, they, these are the factors that you need to wait, uh, have in your arsenal. Prayer, we know that's a key, you know. Now we also need fasting that has to be included in that prayer. And, and the, the, old, the biggest thing, that the first thing that he mentioned, your faith. You know, lack of your faith is another reason. And then he goes in and adds to the other areas that they needed to add to the to the mix to actually have a successful uh, outcome. You know, it takes me to a thought that, uh, you know, like making a cake, you know, you have to have a certain amount of ingredients or a certain ingredients and a certain amount for it to actually puff up and to be a cake. If you don't do it right, then it turns into a brownie. Yeah, I mean, it's a different, different, uh, different kind of thing, even though they taste good. You know, one is, you know, has a different ingredient. It makes it what it is, you know, and I think this is kind of in that same realm where, you know, we're, 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 we're being told, for one, we have to put on our, our armor, you know, that should be the first thing that we got to do, which includes our sword, you know, uh, that word, and then we'll, that's going to help encourage us in our, our belief, you know, having that word to be able to be on our hearts and to be able to present as a, as a weapon using that sword 
you know, as, as a as a weapon of uh, to be able to destroy the works. But then you take it to the other factors that are included in that. Now you start to see the full armor coming together. You got a strong warrior there for the for the, for the kingdom of Yahuwah to be able to destroy the works of Hasatan. Yeah, brother Dean. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Um, um, earlier on, uh, when we started today, because um, when we were praying and, and, and just testifying, you know, of, of, of the greatness of Yahuwah and his mercy, um, I didn't want, like, I was something I wanted to share, but I was like, oh, no, this doesn't feel like the right moment. But um, uh, we were watching with the children today um, about uh, the betrayal, uh, Kepha's betrayal. Um, and just talking about, you know, right now I'm just hearing that, you know, uh, the importance of staying, you know, staying fresh, staying alert, you know, staying on purpose. And um, I was looking at um, uh, Yehuda uh, Iskariot. Yes, Iskariot. Yes, I don't know. Judas. Yeah, Judas. Yeah. And just this, this scripture where the scripture says, in uh, John 13, 2, and it says, and supper being ended, the devil having now put in to the heart. Yeah. Now, if, you know, if we understand that how, how imperative it is for us to stay on guard, because, you know, we, we talk about demons, you know, we were, we were speaking just now and he said, you know, uh, son, the seven sons of Sceva and the demon, but there are instances where he's clearly stating the devil himself is, 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 is you know, is taking charge over um, causing the demise of, of you know, of, of, of one of Yahuwah's, uh, you know, chosen. Um, so yeah no I, I just yeah wanted to say you know i think it's very important i don't think it's by any by any coincidence that we're talking about fasting we're talking about the importance of prayer the, the importance of amuna and and staying alert um and also just the final thing and then i close it just to say i think we think that walking with is by default walking in um and i think that you know that might need to be reviewed even for myself uh, especially just because you say you're walking with doesn't mean you're walking in so yeah hallelujah that's an interesting word uh you play that you use there you know walking with or walking in those are two different instances for sure one is you know kind of what i just described you know just haphazardly going through the motions where w being in it you know it's inside of you. You you know it's something that's that's coming forth out of you. So now you're actually walking in the the fullness of it all, brother Rod. Yeah, no, no. Uh, what brother Dean said is consistent with what we've been learning. You know, um, you know, we talked about the seven sons of Skeva. You know, walking, watching, but they were trying to emulate. They were trying to you know do the same things, but they were not walking in you know we talked last week about false prophets you know it's not just talking about people from the outside trying to get in it's talking about those that are seemingly within you walking alongside of you that look like you on the outside but are inside like Dean said not really walking in truth not really walking in the ruach and 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 rising and causing turmoil among you so so that whole idea keeping guard keeping watch keeping sharp you know and making sure you're praying to the father and fasting to make sure those things stay sharp is very necessary uh, so I, I liked i liked his explanation his uh his his illustration there praise god no i agree we're definitely on point um with all of this uh, one thing that also that I that I really uh, wanted to look at real quick is, um, you know, the question that Yahusha asked the father, how long, you know, has this been with this child? And he said, since his childhood. If that doesn't put a check in your spirit for those that have children, you know, you think that they're immune or they're, they're you know, that this can't affect them. Well, this scripture right here tells us this. This is from since he was a child. 
and he was still young. So, you know, we, this is, I think, part of the importance of also raising our children in this same way so that they understand the truths and get away from the falsehoods so that they can also walk in this same kind of authority. You know, because if we're looking at this and we think that we're, we can just not have to worry about our children because we're here, well, you know, they got to understand it. They got to walk it. They got to believe this too. You know, and I know, you know, from watching uh, our children's Shabbat hour, they, they get in it. They walk in it just like we are, you know. And so they have to be protected. There has to be that protection on them as well. You know, especially in this day and hour. Think about what these children are exposed to. These cell phones that they're constantly looking at. You know, the computers, the, the, the YouTubes, the TikToks. I mean, you can go on and on and on about the stuff that they're being bombarded by. And I believe that we know that this is a type of programming, you know? So what they're being allowed to have received inside of their, their eyes and their ears into their spirit, don't think that that don't have an effect. So we have to be on guard for our children and protecting them also because they are exposed to this, you know? Um, especially when they get out underneath your covering and they go out to school and they start hanging with their friends and all of these different influences can have an effect and we don't know where they can pick this stuff up from how this child got this you know how this came upon them but you know that was just another thing that i that i seen that spoke to me you know you know because yahushua asked that question for a reason uh, uh, because there had to be an, uh, a reason for this to be exposed to us you know um so i, I just wanted to, to to bring that forth because that was another thing that i seen um that i think that's important for us to pay attention to you know uh, we all a lot of us have children and sometimes we we don't always look at the whole scope of the umbrella of things if you will you know so as we're being reminded again and again about what we should do how we should do these things you know he's given us another warning here you know to make sure we're watching out for our children and protecting them as well hallelujah because the enemy he, he he's going to go for the weak you know he's going to go for the young you know, we see that example in, in, the, in the wild, you know, the lions do that stuff. So, you know, just another last word. Um, anybody have anything else before we conclude here? I don't see any other hands up. Um, and we are at the end of our time in the next three minutes. So I think we'll go ahead and conclude our, our discussion here this morning. So I appreciate all your input and Yahoo is good. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom.